gentlemen, thank you. Tonight our traveling circus rolls into Music City, Vanderbilt, Tennessee. Close the regular season with a ton on the line for Big Orange. With a win tonight and a little bit of help down in the Sunshine State, Tennessee could be headed back to the Sugar Bowl. And you know, Vol Nation has a destination in mind for the postseason, and that would be it. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart, Hall of Famer and Heisman Trophy winner, Andre Ware. Meanwhile, the optics for Tennessee, if they lose tonight, completely opposite. That means by record, you're no better than you were last year, and you started the season as a top 10 team. Now, they do have a top 10 defender. The guys already talked about Derek Barnett. Here's a guy that can change the game. I'm glad I'm up here with you and I'm not on the field having to dodge Derek Barnett all night long because that's exactly what he does to quarterbacks. He knows how to get after you. Leads the SEC in sacks. How does he do it? Low to the ground. Just amazing how fast that he gets there. He can defend the run. We talked to coaches around this league about Tennessee. The first name they mentioned is Derek Barnett wreaking havoc on their quarterback the numbers have been remarkable the only one in SEC history with 10 sacks each of three seasons tied for fifth in the country with 11 sacks this year so we know what he does now let's learn how he does it as we go down to the field and say happy Thanksgiving to Cole Kubelik happy Thanksgiving to you Tom Derek Barnett's one of my favorite guys to watch play defensive line in this league I'm gonna show you why he has some success great ball get off first and foremost very elite at finding the football and projecting the snap but when he gets Gets off that football he loves the dip and rip so he'll come into the offensive tackle dip that shoulder and rip underneath what does that force the tackle to do lunge at Derek Barnett reach for Derek Barnett which forces him to bend at the waist that prevents you from gaining proper depth as a tackle shortens the edge for Derek Barnett how do you make up for that if you're an offensive tackle gain depth more quickly then Derek Barnett will turn into you and run you over potentially flattening you like a tire as long as you're not stuck in the side <laughs> i 40 you might be okay but vandy has a counter to that Derek barnett second to reggie white all time in school history in sacks okay so that's a lot of fun to get to nashville but then once you get here you have to deal with another top defender in the sec that's their linebacker zach cutting yeah and a potential defensive player of the year of their own vanderbilt has him on their sideline he goes by the number where's the number 41 zach cunningham if you're the in the uh, SEC's leader in sacks, well, I'll match you. I got the SEC leader in tackles, then second in tackles for loss in this conference at 16 and a half. Zach Cunningham is a sideline to sideline player that will flat out get after you. Second in the SEC in tackles for loss, two very disruptive defensive players and a guy with a defensive mind, Derek Mason, trying to get Vandy to six wins and automatic bowl eligibility. They won't have to lean on the academics with a win here tonight. Tennessee won the toss. The Volunteers have elected to defer. So we'll see Vandy on offense to get things started. A lot on the line for this guy as well. Fourth season as Tennessee's head coach. He could get the Volunteers to the Sugar Bowl in a season that seemed oh so promising about six weeks in. But their offense has been magnificent over the last three weeks. As great as those defenders are, this could turn into a shootout tonight. It's been a remarkable day in college football, and we're happy to close it out tonight on the SEC Network for an SEC Saturday night. C.J. Duncan back to receive this low kick from the goal line. Out to the 21, it's Darius Sims for Vanderbilt. And here's the test for Tennessee. As good as their offense has been as of late, their defense has flat been atrocious. Last two games, they've allowed an average of 431 yards per game and eight touchdowns. They've been especially, especially torn apart by the run. And oh, by the way, that's Vanderbilt's strength. And Butch Jones, he'll tell you that a lot of injuries have occurred, but it's next man up at Tennessee. They don't have a lot of depth on that side of the football. Can they afford to have players exit this game via injury but you see there's Zach Stacy only 27 yards away from the score record he will test them thoroughly Ralph Webb trying to catch Stacy and on the very first play from scrimmage he rips off an 11 yard run before Micah Abernathy meets him 
Vanderbilt's quarterback, one of the young guns in the SEC, Kyle Shermer, just a sophomore from Philadelphia, coach's son. Yeah, really starting to play better. The last three games, over 60%, 746 yards, and about even in touchdowns and interceptions. Still needs to take care of the ball a little better, but the improvement is visible when you turn on the video. Nathan Marcus, a tight end, shifts to the right side. Sam Dobbs takes the end around from his tight end spot. That's the first time Vandy has run this play all season, and it's able to pick up five something Tennessee didn't see on film. I think Andy Ludwig's going to empty the bag tonight, bag of tricks offensively. Who do they need to have a big game? Well, they're, they're receiving leader in both receptions and yards. C.J. Duncan going to play a big part in what Vanderbilt does this evening. They want to run Ralph Webb. If they can't do it, pick it up and throw it. Find C.J. Duncan, who always seems to make plays for this offense. Second. Tennessee's loaded the box. Here's Ralph Webb. Lowers his head on nice. second and short and picks up nothing. Colton Jumper meets him in the hole. Yeah, he's been a consistent player since last fall, really. Kind of improved, improved his body last year, got himself in the weight room, added some weight and some strength, and knows this defense inside and out, puts himself in a position to make a lot of plays. Former walk-on who has earned himself a scholarship. And he's earned more time at that linebacker spot. They lost team captain Jalen Reeves Maven early in the season. Third and one for Bandy. Dallas Rivers the back. Yeah, he's the big back, the thumper. In short yardage situations, that's where they go. Rivers oh. stopped at the line, couldn't spin free. Kendall Vickers with the stop. And Vanderbilt will have to punt it away. Not sure. Derek Mason taking his time to make this decision. They are going to empty this bag tonight, trying to get themselves to bowl eligibility at six wins. And you're across the 50-yard line, Tom. All bets are on. I like the decision. Go. I like the decision. You're sending a message to your team right here. i to have Shermer try to draw them off sides first. If you can't get someone to jump, go in bla with blasting game not sure he's in there better short yardage runner or the best short yardage runner for it. they got Bailey McElwain at fullback Ralph Webb at tailback here's Webb Webb met in the hole it'll depend on the spot a gang of white shirts there to drive it back but let's see where forward momentum was I think he might have gotten it Plays like that. I don't know. Taking it back that deep, you allow for penetration. I think he, Ralph Webb, just, just nosed out a first down. No, they're going to call it Tennessee's ball. Kenny Bynum was the first man there for Tennessee. You see, just in the hole. 51 flash Bynum and just swallows up Ralph Webb. In all of his years at Tennessee, now in his fourth season, and Dobbs, his senior aerospace engineering major, leads the SEC with 34 touchdowns. In other words, he's a smart young man. His course load this semester tougher than a lot their entire college careers. And his workload's been pretty good the last two weeks in the football field. Ten touchdowns in the last two games. Alvin Kamara is the starting tailback. They go play action. Dobbs finds his tight end, Ethan Wolf, And Wolf is able to rumble down the sideline, stepped out of bounds at the 47, and a gain of nine. And we think that Tennessee's going to run the football well. When they go to the air, go to a big strong-hand guy, and Jawan Jennings can really make plays on 50-50 balls. Throw it up in his area. Two touchdowns last weekend. We'll make plays for you. Second and short, Kroom and Wolf shift to the left side. Jet sweep Alvin Kamara. First down, and then he took a shot on the hip. Taken down by Ryan White, who's back from an ankle injury. Gain of four. Vanderbilt's had a solid defense since Derek Mason arrived on the West End. And then for Vanderbilt. Keep an eye on Ryan White. Going to be big and run support tonight for Vanderbilt. Derek Mason telling us he really needs a big game out of the redshirt junior, Ryan White. 
out of Louisville's Trinity High School. By the way, huge win for Kentucky today, knocking off the Cardinals late. Here's Jawan Jennings. Jennings. Inside the 20, White forces him out of bounds in a 25-yard game. He's showing us something that uh, he's usually making plays down the field, but this little curl route or hitch route on the outside, watch the move that he puts on McGaster. And he's their best cover man, Vanderbilt's best cover man, going to find himself in a lot of one-on-one -on -one situations tonight as they bring more bodies inside to stop the run. Creeping up from the corner now. Opening drive for Tennessee. Dobbs straight ahead. Gain of four. Jordan Griffin to stop. Boy, what a play fake. He had me fooled. I thought Tyler Bird had the football, and so did half the Vanderbilt defense before locating Josh Dobbs. Here's Kamara this time, and he spins his way to the five, stays on his feet, and waltzes into the end zone. 14-yard Tennessee waltz for Alvin Kamara. What a weapon for this Tennessee offense. Mike DeBoer dialing up the run to Alvin Kamara. Breaks about four tackles before easing his way into the end zone, making it look easy. Fifth straight game with a touchdown for Kamara. The Alabama transfer. How loaded was Alabama? <laughs> they could afford to lose him and not miss a beat. Snap was high, but the kick is good. A five-play, 56-yard drive after stopping Vanderbilt on fourth and short. Alvin Kamara, eighth touchdown in the last four and a half games, and he just eases his way in. Baby, Didn't take long for Alvin Kamara in Tennessee to get on the board. 7-0. 9-15 to go in the first quarter. Now let's just take a look at this week's... Well, let's take a look at where to watch. Why don't we do that first, Andre? Yeah. Tell us what you're watching from for. Tennessee, they got to stop the run of Vanderbilt. Last two games, giving up over 430 yards. Oh, they came up big on third and fourth down of that first Vanderbilt drive. And then for Vandy, it's make Josh Dobbs one-dimensional. Hadn't done it. Had a couple of runs. And then as well, perfect in the passing game, two for two. Darius Sims muffs the kickoff, and he'll take a seat. Now and what did you think of that Louisville-Kentucky game today? I was surprised. Turn it over four times at the quarterback spot. You're going to lose football games. Would you lose a trophy? Yep, it's quite possible when you your last game, you turn it over four times and strike the pose before. Shermer's got man coverage, works it to the outside, and that's complete to Trent Sherfield. And Sherfield has a first down, a gain of 18, just one single safety back to help. Sherfield a season high 72 yards last week and an offensive explosion yeah, got in the end zone. Got, got himself in the end zone last week. His only touchdown reception of the year. And on play action, Shermer has two deep and he's able to work it deep with a nice grab by Jared Pinckney. Gain of 28. Cole, what do you see in the play action? Big play there off play action, Tom. We saw it last week, this Vanderbilt offense under Andy Ludwig. It felt like every bit of success that they had through the air came off play action. They go a little bit faster, but boy, even when the run game is not necessarily cranked up, Kyle Shermer is excellent off the play fake. Yeah, and when you have a target like Jared Pinckney, he was big last week, three big catches, starting off well tonight. Play action again. Out of the backfield is the fullback McElwain. He's in the end zone for the second consecutive week. What a job in terms of calling plays by Andy Ludwig, the offensive coordinator for Vanderbilt. They accept the rush, free release by the back. McElwain out of the backfield. It just takes a touch pass from Kyle Shermer to get him into the end zone. Excellent, excellent job of calling plays. Tommy Openshaw for the point after to cap a sixth place, 75 yard drive. Wow, 
Oh, close. Kelsey almost got to it. Tied at 7, 6.49 remaining in the first quarter in Nashville. Tennessee aiming to return to the Sugar Bowl and what a sign it was in 1986 against Heisman winner Vinny Testaverde and Michael Urban with the Canes. Testaverde hooked up with Urban on the first drive and did score again. Then all Tennessee, they scored the next 35 in a 35-7 win. Brett McMurphy and Mark Schleyball both project Tennessee to head to the All-State Sugar Bowl against one of the Oklahoma schools. Now, for that to happen, Tennessee obviously needs to win tonight to get to nine wins and be attractive in that regard, but also keep climbing the college football playoff rankings, and they would need to finish ahead of, among others, Florida. Won't Gators and Seminoles getting ready to kick. Won't be an easy win, according to these volunteers who are trying to get themselves bowl eligible. No return for Tennessee. We talked about Josh Dobbs will throw on first down, and he finds Josh Malone. Wrestled out of bounds by Torn McGaster, gain of six. Yeah, giving a little bit too much respect to Malone and Jennings, the Tennessee receivers, are Trey Herndon and Torn McGaster. They're going to just bleed you with hitch routes until you come up. A lot of depth being given. Look at that space between receiver and cornerback. Dobbs will take off. Oh, pardon me, that's Jawan Jennings taking the direct snap. The sophomore from down the road in Murfreesboro was a high school quarterback. He came to Tennessee as a quarterback before being shifted to wide receiver, and he picks up three. Yeah, he surprised his coaching staff with his ability to adjust to wide receiver so quickly last year. Very athletic. He's from an athletic family as well. His sister Alexis played hoop, plays hoops at South Carolina. Good basket, women's basketball program. Third down two. Dobbs has yet to run. He had 190 on the ground against Missouri last week. Fires into traffic complete to Kroon for the first down. Six yard gain. That's a host of black yeah. shirts there. About three. Vanderbilt defenders right there around the tight end Kroon. You'll see the cluster. They both turn. It got to be a blown route between the two tight ends, Ethan Wolf and Jason Kroon. But you know what? Somebody grabbed the football. Looked like a game of 500 in the <laughs> cul-de-sac. Just get it out, grab it out of the air. Play action. Man deep down the left side. Instead of check down to Josh Malone. Nice spin move by Malone, and he's cut down at the 35-yard line. Pick up a 26. Well, I really like this kid. I think he's one of the smoothest route runners in all of college football. Had a boatload of talent. His great hands and speed to get deep. Perfect start for Dobbs. That'll count as a pass to Kroon, but it won't get past the line of scrimmage. Ladarius Wiley blows it up, and they'll lose a couple. Well, and that's what you like to see if you're Derek Mason. A lot of black jerseys around Jason Kroon to make that tackle. Tackle in swarms because these are big, strong receivers and tight ends for Vanderbilt. You've got to get a lot of bodies around the football. Great coverage downfield. Dobbs outraces Butler and he gets up the sideline. Dobbs still rolling. Ryan White brings him down in the open field. It was going to be a loss of 10. Instead, it's a gain of 15. Yeah, he got away from Adam Butler and then Landon Stokes as well on the outside. Gives up leverage. Once he gets outside, Landon Stokes comes inside. Doesn't have enough speed right there to bring him down. He's so big, so strong, so fast. He is tough but for anyone to bring down one-on-one. -on -one. Set up the screen on the backside. This is Alvin Kamara. Kamara trying to shake Cunningham. He does. Kamara sheds another door. He's in. What a run by Alvin Kamara. It's a great run, but aided by poor tackling. 
starting with Trey Hearn in the corner that gives up outside leverage. When you throw, you better make contact right there. Cunningham misses a tackle as well. Ladarius Wiley, the safety, misses a tackle. Everybody reaching rather than wrapping up for this Vanderbilt defense. Playing like it's cold outside or something. That is the ninth touchdown for Kamara in the last four games and a quarter. Aaron Medley's point after is good. Tennessee has scored on each of its two possessions tonight. What a difference maker Alvin Kamara is. He's got two scores tonight and Tennessee back in front by a touchdown. Alvin Kamara has two touchdowns tonight. He wills his way into the end zone. Just think flow rider and you'll be okay. <laughs> Just poor tackling is what I'm thinking. A yard in is Sims. Wow. He gets spun around. And this is a Tennessee defense now with Rashawn Golden making a stop, playing with some emotion after their offense gives him a touchdown lead. Josh Dobbs will take Tennessee on the other side of the field. It's the end of the first quarter here in Music City. And Dobbs. Tennessee powered by Alvin Kamara on this senior night on Nashville's West End enjoying a 14 to 7 lead and looking to add to it second quarter right around the corner touchdown lead for Tennessee and driving again as we start this second quarter Tom Hart Andre Ware Cole Kubelik Josh Dobbs off to a perfect start eight of eight for a buck go five we talked about a little bit a couple weeks ago in the Kentucky game he may leave Rocky Top is one of the most beloved players in Tennessee football history and if he can get him to the Sugar Bowl that will only add to his legacy. It's like off sides right there. Shermer over the middle and that's taken right back by Tennessee and Mike Abernathy. Fifth takeaway of the season for Abernathy his second pick. Well, it looked as though Corey Vereen was lined up off sides. Thought the officials would throw that flag. They didn't, and they turn it right back over. Now, this is when you go to the end zone. If you're Josh Dobbs in Tennessee, threaten the end zone. Defense, they are ticked. They've just made a big play. You throw it out in front. You got the tight end Dobbs, who is kind of hooking up. Shermer's expecting him to continue crossing because of the man to man. And then Abernathy, this is when you go deep right here, and you got it at the top. Dobbs comes back this way for Josh Malone. Malone cuts it back, gets a block, and Malone is in. Touchdown, Tennessee. <laughs> well, once again, poor tackling on the part of Vanderbilt defensively right here you can bring you got to bring him down Zach Cunningham trying to stop him that may be short just short of the goal line when they take a look at this for Alvin Kamara two on the ground one through the air. It's a series that dates to 1892, but even Tennessee and Vanderbilt can't agree on how many games they've officially played. Vanderbilt claims they have one more win than Tennessee does, but Tennessee says, listen, that game was played during the World War I era. That wasn't even an official team. We don't count that one. Well, they count the last 33, and Tennessee's won 30 of those, but a heartbreaking loss a couple of years ago when Tennessee came in Butch Jones's first year and Vandy sent him home with a loss. Here's Darius Sims. And Sims is out to the 24 yard line. Play action. Shermer will uncork one. Caleb Scott diving grab. What a play and a first down for Vandy. 44 yards. And it's a secondary that's had some injuries to it as well. From Andy Ludwig. I'm going to test him and he gets behind Stephen Griffin, the safety. What an excellent catch on the part of Caleb Scott. Usually a big third down receiver for this Vanderbilt offense. It'll lull him to sleep, get him behind coverage, and you know he's got the hands to make plays for you. In a big game last week against Ole Miss.
Here's Rivers. A pickup of three on first down. Darren Kirkland Jr. with a tackle for Tennessee. Rivers is getting the bulk of the work with Ralph Webb tonight. Here's Blasson game for the first time. For the first time, and you see a big physical runner now. He is the thumper. Big part of their success the last couple of weeks. Play action to him. On the run, incomplete. Trying to fit it into the tight end, Jared Pinckney, and Derek Barnett was chasing him down. Yeah, that's just when you have to put some touch on the football. Doesn't have to be drilled in there. Just get it to him out in front where he can control it, catch it, tuck it away, and turn it up the field. When it's coming 100 miles an hour and you're only about five yards away, that's tough for anybody to handle. Florida State's taking a 7-0 lead on Florida. Dalvin Cook with a touchdown run. By the way, talking about Tennessee getting the Sugar Bowl, they want Florida State to be Florida. Then, of course, Alabama needs to be Florida in the SEC championship game. Otherwise, Alabama might take that Sugar Bowl spot, but a lot still to be played. Fired to the outside. That's complete for a first down to Trent Sherfield. Of course, well, that's a that's generous spot. He ran the route to that spot, but I'm not sure he came down past the first down marker. Watch him come all the way back, jump. He is. Kyle Shermer showing some toughness, taking a shot from Derek Barnett. What a drive in response. You turn it right back over, give Tennessee some points, but putting together another pretty good drive here is this Vanderbilt Commodore offense. Sims into the backfield. Nothing doing on the left side. Corey Vereen is there. I misspoke a moment ago talking about Alabama and Florida in the SEC title game. If Florida were to knock off Alabama, they wouldn't be in the college football playoff, but they would be in the Sugar Bowl as the SEC champion. Well, what a dynamic player Vereen is opposite Derek Barnett is an excellent motor just plays tough each and every play 100 miles an hour. There's Barnett the book in on the other side two pretty good ones and Barnett and Vereen. It's almost like they come packaged that way right I mean you have one great defensive end the other guy by proxy has opportunities. Shermer whoa fit it in. Sam Dobbs is in. Nice. 20 yard touchdown strike. Thought he may have allowed Abernathy in front of him because he's trying to cradle the ball on the interception, but certainly shows the hands on this one. Just plucks it right out of the air. And then the presence in mind to get right back up the field. What a catch. Beats Abernathy there and then works his way into the end zone. Vanderbilt. He won't go away. Jacob Schultz is the long snapper. Wilson Johnson the holder and Tommy Openshaw to attempt the point after. Another near block by Cameron Sutton. That's the second time he's been in there and nearly taken one away. Kyle Shermer with his second touchdown pass to the game hooking up for with Sam Dobbs his first touchdown of the season. First career touchdown for Dobbs, a sophomore from Douglasville, Georgia. Shermer now two touchdown passes and a pick tonight. Bandy's got some very talented tight ends. They really do. Pinckney, excellent receiving tight end, and then now Dobbs starting to emerge. Nathan Marcus had an excellent game last week against Ole Miss. There were a lot of key blocks to free up Ralph Webb, blasting game. Tyler Bird back to return for Tennessee. Angled kick and Bird has it on the sideline. Surges his way towards the 25. Dobbs fires out to Jawan Jennings. Pick up a bait on first down. Kind of a product of what we've talked about. That big cushion on the outside by these corners. Trey Herndon faced with 
Juwan Jennings who lines up left in this formation now tightening down because he's got help over the top with the safety. Bandy had a good read on that play from the get go and they snuff it out with John Kelly loss of two. You can almost see the linebackers cheating up when they saw the formation expecting what was playing. They may have won that play in the video room. And Arnold Tarpley, who was a safety on that side that I circled, came up and run support to help finish this thing off. Owen Burks fighting to get there as well. Charles Wright keeping outside leverage, and that keep, keeps, it keeps everything inside to allow those other playmakers to show up and finish things off. Only one down lineman for Vandy. Third and four. Out to Malone. And he's stopped short by Torin McGaster. A gain of only one. Tennessee will have to punt it away. Yeah, that's what they call their money team. You mentioned one down lineman. They bring in a couple of linebackers, stand them up. Cunningham's on that, uh, on that unit as well. Kalen Pert. An outside linebacker comes into the ball game along with Ladarius Wiley. They call it the money team. Time to get the money on third down. Their pass rush unit. Elijah Lipscomb, the freshman from New Orleans, back to return. He's been bothered lately by a knee injury. But Vandy had some return issues last week. Great punt, and he'll take a fair catch at the 19-yard line. Trevor Daniel booms a 49 yarder. Vandy looking to grab some momentum tonight. Automatic bowl eligibility on the line tonight for Vanderbilt with their sixth win of the season. Should they come from behind and knock off Tennessee, they'll likely get there anyway. College football needs to fill 80 bowl slots. Crossing route, Trent Sherfield full head of steam. He's got the sideline. It's now a foot race. Sherfield dragged down inside the five. Catch and run, covers 77 yards. Malik Foreman never gave up and had the tackle. Yeah, he's the deep threat for this offense, and you see why. Nice play action and window dressing by Andy Ludwig because when Darius Sims comes in the game, nine out of ten times, they get the football to him. But the play action to Sims opens it up for Sherfield, and then it turns into a track meet. Boy, Malik Foreman tracks him down, but... What a play by the Commodore offense. Officially 76 yards, longest play from scrimmage for Vandy this year. Here's Webb. Shifty move, and he's in. Nine-yard touchdown run for Ralph Webb. What a nice job by the tight end, Jared Pinckney, the right guard, Bruno Reagan of leading the way saw this last week as well Reagan had maybe his best game against Ole Miss blocking up front that's the big fella 61 pull out nice kick out block Pinkney's trying to seal off inside against Abernathy but didn't really need that block it was the block of Reagan that set Ralph Webb free and let me tell you something this is a different Vanderbilt football team. Jacob Schultz, the long snapper here with Wilson Johnson to hold, and the point after is good. We are tied at 21. It is senior day here at Vanderbilt Stadium, and a very special twist to this senior day. That's Jacob Schultz, the senior from Murfreesboro, who was introduced with his family today. There was one member, though, who hasn't been stateside. It's his brother Joshua, an incident in the U.S. Navy. Joshua was hiding around the corner. He's home from a seven-month deployment in the Persian Gulf. Jacob had no idea and then the reveal today will be the first time Joshua will be able to see Jacob play for Vanderbilt that's awesome awesome just can't get enough of that nope and you could not knock the smile off the brothers faces pregame a year or so ago Tennessee jumps out the way they have against Vanderbilt 21 7 that would have been game set match. Yes. This is a different program under Derek Mason in 2016. Tyler Bird. Tyler Bird. Tyler Bird. And he's all the way down to the 26 yard line. Just the tackling. 
Coach Mason's got to pull his squad together. I mean, watch how many arm tackles. Guys just reaching right there. Then you get the, the kicker reaching. And it turns into a foot race. Thank, thank goodness for Owen Burks, if you're a Vanderbilt fan, by making a play on the back end of this thing. But just too many arm tackles here in the first half by this Vanderbilt football team. 67 yard return for Bird. They say he stepped out of bounds at the 24 yard line, the freshman from Naples, Florida. Pardon me, the 28 yard line. On the ground, Alvin Kamara. Guess what? Alvin Kamara didn't score. Torian Ferguson drags him down. What you having for four touches, three touchdowns? Yes. Prior to that play, yes. Declining. <laughs> Percentages are going down. Josh Dobbs in Tennessee looking to answer and reclaim this lead. Long out route, and it's dropped by Josh Malone. First incompletion of the night from Josh Dobbs, who hit on his first 11. Yeah, and he's going to have to continue to do that. Because now, when you start to close that fast as McGaster did there, now you're prone to the uh, to the to the hitch and go slant and goes the double moves on the outside we saw former Tennessee quarterback Riley Ferguson start 11 for 11 yesterday for Memphis a big win yeah. against Houston over at the Liberty Bowl Wow that was a dangerous play Torian McGaster came up on a hit of Alvin Kamara he comes up a little more under control it's a bigger hit than it was. He, he could have really, really teed off on Camaro. So it'll leave fourth down for Tennessee in a 41 yard field goal attempt for the junior from Lewisburg, Tennessee, Aaron Medley. That's a big, it's a small win for Vanderbilt right here to just hold to a field goal attempt after that return by Tyler Bird. No win tonight on this chilly night on Nashville's West End. And Medley fits it through from 41 yards out. 6.33 to go in the first half. Another offensive night here in Nashville. How about Booger's jacket? That thing is unbelievable. <laughs> he had to kill a couch for that thing, Andre. Of my man Booger. This kid, a kid and bug, we love you. That's a great looking sport coat. I'd ask for it, but I'm not sure it would fit me. Here's Darius Sims. No chance for a turn. Cole, what'd you learn pregame from Derek Mason? He told me that he expected this first half to be a fight, Tom. I asked him, should we expect to see anything different early on on either side of the football for you? He said, no. First half's going to be a feeling out process. A lot of jabs, a lot of jabs. Don't expect us to look for a knockout blow on offense or defense until the second half of this football game. We want to see what Tennessee has to offer early on. Well, it'll be really interesting because it seemed like they looked for that knockout blow on the big pass to Trent Sherfield. So I wonder what it would look like come third quarter. But this is right according to Derek Mason's game plan after they fell behind they're able to tie it up now they're only down a field goal well, a couple of haymakers being thrown early in the fight as opposed to this jabs he referred to Shermer with his fourth straight 200 yard gain here's Ralph Webb looking for a school rushing record he's got the first down and Ralph Webb able to pass Zach Stacy with a 17 yard run well he got the edge some pretty good blocks on that side. Maybe Sean Dowling, the tight end, on the edge, frees it up for Ralph Webb, and that allowed him to turn the corner, get up the field before going out of bounds. Oh, what a heck of a job blocking and running by Dowling in the blocking department and certainly Ralph Webb running the football. All-time leading rusher in Vanderbilt history. Derek Mason expects Ralph Webb to be back for another go at it next year. Dallas Rivers straight ahead picks up two. Tennessee finding the answers for Andy Ludwig and this Vanderbilt offense. It's really keeping the volunteers off balance. Run with a pass. Here's the pass again. Caleb Scott again. He's got it again. Another wow. Vanderbilt first down and a deep ball to Caleb Scott. 
That one goes for 40 yards, 44 on a diving catch earlier this quarter. Sometimes when you find a matchup you like, you just got to keep going there. Look at the concentration. Excellent coverage on the part of Malik Foreman, but it's Caleb Scott with the concentration, the hands, and the speed to get behind the Tennessee secondary. Keep dialing it up. Dad, former All-American tight end here at Vandy, went on to play for the Rams and the Cowboys. First and 10 from the 11. Another play action look. Out to Sims. And Sims no gain. When you look at it, Tom, Bob Shoot, the defensive coordinator, he knows. He knows Sims very well. Recruited him. All these guys on this recruited Ralph Webb. He knows the weaknesses and strengths of this Vanderbilt offense because he had a hand in bringing a lot of these players to Nashville. He was a coach, the defensive coordinator under James Franklin. When Sims comes in the game, he knows the scouting report. They want to get him the football. There he is right there. His family still lives here in Nashville. His son, quarterback of Father Ryan High School. Sims with a hurdle and is able to pick up two. And then they're kind of disguising things with Sims using him as a decoy tonight because when they fake play fake to him it's allowing Caleb Scott to get deep then they come right back nice kick out block by Dallas Rivers to give Sims a little bit of room to work but when they don't give it to him it's the play action that's causing the little bit of hesitation in the secondary of Tennessee and allowing the big plays to develop down the field. Third down seven. Great job by the old line, but the pass through the hands of Trent Sherfield and Vandy will bring the kicking team onto the field. Catchable ball. Well, that's one you gotta have. Third down and seven. You want to continue the drive. You're in that huddle with a group of receivers. Gotta have a play. I gotta have a play. If I come to you, I need you to make a play for me. And you drive it home. Open Shaw, one of the most accurate kickers in the SEC. 13 to 16 on the season. He'll line up for a 31 yard attempt. And it fits in. Tied at 24 with 3.50 to go in the second quarter. If you're driving down Interstate 40 yesterday, <laughs> you saw four guys changing a tire and one dude on the phone with fine bomb doing a hit when he wasn't Snapchatting. That's the biggest and strongest guy, and he never lifted a tool. <laughs> nope. Oh, my goodness. A lot of fun, though. We finished it off with a nice dinner here in Nashville. The only shame of it is it cost us a trip to the Tina Turner Museum. That's what I was looking forward to. So 11.07 kickoff yesterday. Game ended about 3 o'clock Central. Vanderbilt coaches called <laughs> when we made the trip. <laughs> some people grabbed a snooze. We had a flat yep. tire. We got some fine bomb time in. We went straight to the restaurant. Don't put me in a car or an airplane and expect me to stay awake the entire trip. It's going to happen. It's guaranteed to happen. By the way, there was one victim of our trip. The container of Gus's fried chicken got spilled on <laughs> the shoulder. Didn't make it. Didn't no, make it. That was the biggest disaster of all. Forget about the torn up tread and the good year that we left on the side of the road. The fact that we dropped some Gus's fried chicken is the shame of the entire trip. Low pass. Kroom is able to haul it in, but only two yards there. Second and 18 coming up next. Yeah, and if you're Derek Mason, who doubles as head coach, defensive coordinator. You're trying to get to third down and get off the field here. Key in this game was to get them to third and six plus and then get off the field because you'll change the field position at that point. Here comes the corner blitz. Dobbs goes that way. A leaping grab made by Juwan Jennings. And he's finally wrestled out of bounds by Ladarius Wiley. Trey Herndon was the man who came on the blitz. A gain of 14 that's going to set up third down. And now you see why we highlight players. We had the lineups up. That was the guy that was highlighted. Figured he would get some 50-50 balls. And he is as good as any in this league. When you put the ball up and just ask him to make a play, he's going to come down for you in a lot of situations. That was a big play. It leaves third and four. A manageable down and distance for Josh Dobbs. 
Here comes the pressure. They bring two linebackers. Dobbs setting up the screen to Kamara. Kamara's got the first down and plenty more. A blocker in front. Alvin Kamara stuck at the 45 by Ladarius Wiley, but only after he picks up 21. Yeah, once again, you reach it. A arm tackling. Ryan White had a shot at this. Watch the safety 14 coming to your screen right here. Got to make that tackle. That's the difference between getting off the field and alleviating a first down or staying out there and continuing to play. Here's Kelly. Pickup of eight on first down. Wiley another stop. Vandy doesn't want Ladarius Wiley to be their leading tackler today. Don't get me wrong. I know it's a tough tackle. But that's why you're on the field as a starter and a playmaker because you can make that play. Team needs to get off the field. X save field position. Now it's flipped in favor of Tennessee whether they hold and punt or not. Dobbs. Wolf covered up. He'll still fire it to him from point blank range. No gain. Jonathan Wynn caught up with Ethan Wolf, the tight end, the junior out of Minster, Ohio. Another third down in this drive for Tennessee. Third and two for Butch Jones's team. And Derek Mason's thinking the same thing. Get off the field. Tennessee. Here's where I would run Camaro. He's been so hot here in the first half. Let him pick this first down up for you. Option look. Pitch was nearly intercepted and said Kamara's got the first down. Adam Butler tracks him down. A gain of 10 when they needed two. Boy, and they had the personnel outside to make the play. Adam Butler and another Vanderbilt defender, they both go inside. Watch them both crash inside. You have Butler, and it looks like 21 Sheffield, the corner, he goes inside as well. You can't give up outside leverage. Final minute of the first half. Dodge pumps wide open. Yep. Wow, Josh Malone all alone, 27 yards. So we talked about you start really committing and are over committing to the hitch route, driving and being aggressive. You knew the hitch was coming, the hitch and go. I'm sorry, at some point, right here, a hitch and then right back outside. Watch McGasser bite. There's the hitch, and now you make your pay. Make them pay on the outside with a hitch and go. Once you start driving up on it, they're just too talented. One after is good. Josh Dobbs and Josh Malone hook up for the second time tonight. Let's go down the field call with Derek Mason. Coach Mason, pace and tempo of this game's been pretty furious. How much has that changed how you called the game on both sides of the ball? It doesn't change how I call the game. I'll tell you what, we got to tackle better. Too many missed tackles, too many opportunities, too, too many big plays. We've got to shut it down. You told us before the game you needed to stop 6 and 11. They yeah. both had big first half. How yeah. do you stop them in the second half? Tackle them. Tackle them. I've, I've got nothing more than a tackle. Thank you, Coach. You got it. All right, Derek Mason needing his team to tackle. Too many missed ones in the first half. 31-24 our score here. Let's take it out of Dari, Doring, and a man who looks great in plaid, Booger McFarland. <laughs> <laughs> great night to be a quarterback. Josh Dobbs, 17 of 18 with two touchdowns in the first half. Kyle Shermer, a career high 289 yards with two touchdowns. We got a touchdown game. At the break, welcome back everybody. Tom Hart alongside Andre Ware. All of a sudden, a shootout broke out on Nashville's <laughs> West End. What happens in the second half? I'll tell you what, both teams need to tackle better. Derek Mason talked about it going into the half. His team arm tackling, tackling high. Tennessee breaking a lot of, a lot of those tackles and getting themselves into the end zone or the result of big plays. For Tennessee, continue to do what you're doing. Spreading the football around, run Josh Dobbs a little bit more in the second half. And a squib kick to start the second half. Room to run and all the way out to the star. Jakob Johnson with the return. Let's check in with Cole Kubelik. 
time. I got one for your buddy Andre up there in the booth. I spoke to Butch Jones coming out from the half. Asked him what he liked most about Josh Dobbs in the first half. He said he is getting to his second and third progression and making great decisions. He did mention tackling. We still need to tackle in this second half and do it better. Also said, I feel like we are going to need momentum to continue to be on our side to win this football game. Learning a lot tonight. Learned last night that the proper pronunciation of Cole's last name is Kubelich. Mm. Here's Dobbs. Very few design runs in the first half for Dobbs. Able to pick up maybe a yard and a half that time. Yeah, that number is usually around 12, where they just call a, the play call for him is just to keep the football. About 12 carries a game is perfect for Josh Dobbs. Nowhere near that yet in this ballgame. Zach Cunningham left the first half early. He's on the field to start the second half. Back at his spot at middle linebacker. Ethan Wolf. First down for Tennessee and a pickup of 13. He has been pretty much automatic when they throw the football his way. Excellent receiving tight end. First true freshman to start the season at tight end a couple of years ago. Dobbs caught Jennings. 26 yards. Felt like he would have a big game today. Last week, four catches, 67 yards, and he's putting on a show tonight. Well, Vanderbilt's got to get lined up. Camara, ridden down by Oren Burks. You're going fast after the first down, and then you have Jennings in the slot with no one over him. You see that they continue to move Malone and Jennings around. Now again, he's uncovered. Nobody over. They quick snap. Vanderbilt's out of position to defend against him. Dobbs stood up by Ryan White after a gain of two. That's the guy that Derek Mason told us would be a very important part in this game. Safety and run support would have to have his his tackling ability in this ball game. Vanderbilt trying to hold a just a field goal attempt here. Watch the bottom of your screen with Jennings. They love throwing the jump ball right here. Dobbs fires curl incomplete Cunningham got his hands on it a oh, nice job by Kroom as well to kind of play defender and fend off Ryan White who had a who had free access to the football once it was tipped watch 18 once this ball's tipped and you'll see Ryan White trying to undercut it he just kind of boxes him out like a basketball player it's only the second incompletion of the night for Dobbs Tennessee to try and open up a 10 point lead on a chip shot field goal from 25 yards for Aaron Medley. Medley makes another. A nine play, 79 yard drive, and Tennessee extends its advantage on this chilly night in Nashville. Tennessee trying to get to the Sugar Bowl with a win and some help. Vandy trying to make it to automatic bowl eligibility with its sixth win this season. Offensive explosion for both sides. Four minutes ago in the second quarter. Darius Sims back for Vandy. I feel like Vandy needs a score here. He needs points in some fashion whether it comes in the form of a field goal or able to get into the end zone but I think they need to keep pace with Tennessee and allow them to catch all the momentum they need to they need to get some points on the scoreboard on this drive Sims to the 16. There's Webb, picks up three. Mason raved about Trent Sherfield 
yesterday and his work ethic. Great article this week in the Tennessean by Adam Sparks, where Sherfield talks about being homeless as a youngster, lived in a motel with six others in his family. Here's Webb up the sideline. Raced by his mother, who had him when she was a 16-year-old high school student at Danville, Illinois. She had a job at Burger King after school to try to make ends meet, and then came home to do her homework and take care of her young son. And Mason said, the football facility is really his home. Every time I'm there, I see him around. Constantly doing work, constantly in the film room. He's a gym rat. He's working to better his craft. He's got man coverage in the top of the formation. Shermer checks it down and incomplete for Nathan Marcus. Boy, some misses on first down would certainly make a big difference. Yeah, it does. I mean, you got to find, if you're going to throw it, throw it to, you know, find some easy throws on first down for Kyle Sherman. And you can create those. As you mentioned, Sherfield up at, on the top, man coverage, little back shoulder throw. He's shown you that he, he will fight and compete for the football, or you look for an uncovered guy that has coverage to the, that's about 8 to 10 yards deep. Easy throws on first down are what you're looking for. Shermer misfires on the screen that seemingly was right there. Colton Jumper came up to take Webb out of the play. Good eyes on your part. Jumper was right there in the pocket of Ralph Webb. Even had he caught it, he was going to go down right there. So now this is where Vanderbilt wanted to stay away from third down and, and long. Seen a lot of blitz pickups here by this Vanderbilt offensive line. Tom Bob shoot not slowing down at all. Zone blitzes. Derek Barnett drops on first down. They've mixed it up a lot. I'd expect more here. It's what was promised when Bob Shoot got this job when he came here from Penn State. An aggressive Tennessee defense that would come after you all day. And to back off that a little bit because of all the injuries this season. Got Caleb Scott with a linebacker on him. Here's Webb, middle of the field. They need 10. And he's upended, but picks it up. Rashawn Golden flips him after a gain of 11. A nice block right in the middle of the formation to set up the middle screen. Kind of cleared things out where it looks like a four-man front with only jumper in the middle. And I think it's the center, Galger. Jared Galger right in the middle of the formation working against Colton Jumper. Watch him right there. Got away with a little bit of a hold, but... Well, there's a great way to counter that pressure that Cole was just talking about. Yeah, let it come up the field, slip something underneath. Shermer looking deep. There's Sherfield! And a hesitation move will get him more. What Finally forced out of bounds, a gain of 32. What a night for this young man. Somebody told him he was going to play a big part in the game plan this week. And boy, did he buy in. What a nice move. Shows it to one of the better cover men in the SEC and Cameron Sutton. Fools him into thinking he's going on the, on the uh, go route, comes back underneath on a post, and then it turns into a foot race. Nice route. Tennessee has allowed 453 yards of offense tonight. We're not yet to the fourth quarter. Those struggles continue. Kari Blassingame has a hole. Blassingame has a score. What a block by number 83, Nathan Marcus, pulling underneath to clear it open for Blassingame. Keep your eye on number 83. Going to come here and kick out on the end man of the line of scrimmage. Watch him come. Watch him work. Bam, that's the block that frees Blassen game into the end zone. Excellent, excellent work. Ten play drive for Vandy. Tennessee's been close on a couple of those extra points that Openshaw bangs another one through. Ten play drive that covers 83 yards over three minutes and Kari Blashing game with his ninth rushing touchdown of the season.
Three point game, three uh, third quarter and 49 seconds left in this period. So just got to ask for a few points and Vanderbilt delivered the big ones. A knuckleball. And nothing doing on the return by Malik Foreman. Josh Smith in motion. Play action. Dobbs. And a little in route. That's going to go for a first down to Josh Malone. Brought down by Ryan White. Think about what's on the line for Tennessee in this game. A win, and they may have an inside track to the Sugar Bowl. A loss, and through the regular season, they're no better than last year with a third-year starting quarterback and a team that was top ten in the country to start the season. The optics of that are not good. Here's John Kelly. Well, you just can't continue. Oh, oh boy, old Gatorade table going over. You just can't continue to lose outside leverage if you're Vanderbilt defensively can't get crashed down inside and give the corner to John Kelly and guys guys like Kelly and Josh Malone where they're able to turn up the field and display the speed they have the Sugar Bowl is quite a carrot for this Tennessee team leading by a field goal here Vandy's shown a lot of pressure and Dobbs will make a check then they back out, show him something, window dress it, and then get out of it. Quarterback draw. Dobbs meets Cunningham, and that's how the third quarter will come to an end. The ball came loose. They'll say he was down. I would finish it anyway. The Tarpley, go ahead and finish the play. Let him sort it out. Guess who's making plays again? Zach Cunningham. Replay booth might be taking a look at this one. Ball is ball out. is out. Dobbs is not down, and there is a clear and immediate recovery. Yep. Even though there is a whistle, is it should be Vandy's ball where Tartley picked it up. And what a break! Vandy made its own break by forcing it out of Dobbs' hands. It would be his ninth fumble of the season for Josh Dobbs, the fourth loss. The ball was lost prior to the runner being down. Therefore, Vanderbilt will have the ball first down at the 49-yard line to begin the fourth quarter. Review backs him up here, and as we start the fourth quarter, it'll be Vanderbilt's football at midfield, trailing number 17, Tennessee by three. Cunningham and company get the ball back for Shermer. Derek Mason has a chance to put together something special. 470 yards of offense for the doors. I remember where it went holy put that mouthpiece in. He never puts it in anyway. Just chews on it. Tennessee may have jumped. No flag. Shermer says deep ball is mine again. And Caleb Scott nice. is there again. A first down for Vanderbilt. Cameron Sutton with the coverage. A oh, big play, big moment. You're going to go to a guy that you know can make a play for you and make sure that he makes the catch. Caleb Spot Scott has been that receiver along with Trent Sherfield. When you have two, you can't close down one side of the field. It keeps everybody separated. You see here, nice route on Cam Sutton. And I mean, he's not just open, he is wide open. He's the first Vandy quarterback since Chris Nixon to turn in a 400-yard game. That was in 2006. Shermer dumps it incomplete. That's good work. As of now, it is the fifth most productive game by a quarterback in Vanderbilt history ahead of Jay Cutler's 395 against Kentucky in 05. I did not see that coming. 400 yards through the air. We know Tennessee has been porous against the run all season, especially the last three weeks. But Shermer is shredding them tonight. Just talked about his progress. You want to get it, you want to throw it on first down right here. Caleb Scott, little out route. The outside position, you see the corner here. Just give him something easy. It doesn't have to be play action on first down each and every time. Lashing game. Powering up the middle. Picks up four. By the way, it's the most passing yards allowed by Bob Shoup's defense this season. Drew Locke from Missouri threw for 320 against him last week in a 700-yard day. And we thought it would come on the ground. Yes. Because Tennessee has given up over 430 yards of rushing in the last two games and we thought Vanderbilt would be able to take advantage of it that way 
had no idea it would come in the form of a 400 yard passing for performance by Kyle Shermer. Shermer's been great. Third down, second half, four or five for 47 yards, all of them third and six or longer. Well, he has the corner out if he wants it. A bullet complete. Schofield again. And a Vanderbilt first down inside the five on a 16 yard strike. A oh, nice job of clearing it out by Caleb Scott. You're thinking that he's going to go there. I thought the corner route, they clear it out for Sherfield. Watch the route. You see Caleb Scott, nine, clear it out. Coming in right behind him is number 10, Trent Sherfield. Excellent route combination to pick up the first down. Oh, first and goal to goal and at the big back end. That's Dallas Rivers. Sims in motion. They give it to him on the jet sweep. He's in. Vandy in front. It's Tom, the first you're gonna lead run. of the night, Andre. You're going to run on the edges. You need good edge blocks. And it comes in the form of Jared Pinckney, number 80, and Nathan Marcus, 83, who is a red zone blocking machine. For Vanderbilt. Two guys just clean things up and they make it easy for Darius Sims to get in the end zone. Tennessee scored on its opening drive. The Volunteers led through three quarters, but Derek Mason's squad gets a takeaway and a Josh Dobbs fumble. And with their best field position of the night, they're able to cash in on a short field, converting a key third down. And then Darius Sims, with his first rushing touchdown of the season, puts the doors in front for the first time. Senior night at Vandy, Adam Butler told us a bowl game for him would mean the world. He said it means more time with the people I love. Ralph Webb has never played in a bowl game for Vanderbilt. Adam Butler, big country boy from Duncanville, Texas. Well, we had a nice visit with him last week. Are they having fun? I think so. I'm dancing to stay warm. They're dancing because they're fired up. <laughs> Here's Tyler Bird. Taken down. No, oh, he's staying on his feet. And Bird tried to reverse field. Unable to gain any more ground. And he won 22 straight at one point in this rivalry, but early on it was dominated by Vandy. A series that dates to 1892. In the first 12 games, Vandy outscored Tennessee 22 to 2. They never did this back in 1892. Here's the action right here. Not too much. Cooler heads prevail. Dobbs on second and three. Ethan Wolf with the grab and a first down. Cole? Tom, I'm watching the trenches here, and there's an offensive lineman for Tennessee, a defensive lineman for Vandy going at it seemingly after every play, finishing to the whistle. Have to love the physicality you're seeing this game turn into. Kelly fights his way through to Cunningham after a gain of two. 17 to 6, Florida State leads Florida. Two minutes into the fourth quarter in Tallahassee. Should Florida lose that game and lose the SEC championship game to Alabama? Josh Dobbs in Tennessee could be a play for the Sugar Bowl, but they can't afford to lose tonight. Dobbs is having one of not only his most efficient games ever, but one of the most efficient in college football this season. He's 23 of 25 tonight. So T. Martin like numbers. On second and eight. Dobbs chase. He's in the open field. And he's got the first down. Nine yards scamper for the senior. It's a Vanderbilt defender that had a chance early. And he's able to outrun it. He's just kind of sneaky fast. You see him here. That's actually Charles Wright, the outside linebacker. And Cunningham has to finally get him out of bounds. Florida State just added another score. They're taking care of the Gators 23-6 in the fourth quarter. Dobbs out of the pistol. Kamara slow plays it and then bursts to the outside. 
He's got a first down of plenty. Wow. What a guy Alvin Kamara is. What a runner. What if he would have been a starter for two years? Just the patience of Alvin Kamara. Watch him here. He'll allow the blocks to set themselves, and then it's just speed. Out running Torin, Fer Torin Ferguson. Ferguson to the corner. You talked about Hutchinson Community College. Went to junior college after Alabama. He ran for over 1,200 yards there in one season. He ran right out of Hutch, didn't he? Yep. All the way to Rocky Top. Dobbs. Why not? Gets by the first man. Dragged down by the second, but after he picks up the first down, 15 yard run for Dobbs, and he's starting to take over this game. He's too big, he's too strong to arm tackle. 6 3, 2 10, and we're in the fourth quarter. Haven't figured that out by now. I mean, Charles Wright had a shot on him. He goes high, try to arm tackle Josh Dobbs. It's not going to work. Dobbs takes it himself. Does not get the block he needed on the edge from Kroom, and so Oren Burke's able to get there and throw him for a loss of one. Good sportsmanship to help Dobbs up at the end of that play. And Jawan Williams, a true freshman, helping out as well. And that's how you stop a guy like Josh Dobbs. Show up in numbers, and then go low first and let everybody else clean up up top. But you can't start high on Josh Dobbs. He's just too strong. Vandy brings five. They get to Dobbs and take him down. Second sack of the night for Vanderbilt. It's Adam Butler again. How did Derek Mason describe Josh Dobbs to us? Said he's a running back playing quarterback that can throw the football very well. That's kind of how he looks at him, but here, big Adam Butler getting there. Tackling in numbers. Josh Smith able to get to get home as well. He also said if they're going to expose their quarterback to hits, we have to hit him. And they have on consecutive plays. It leaves third and 17 to throw. Incomplete. Trying to find Tyler Bird. Dobbs showing his frustration after that play. That was an issue that Butch Jones had on them during and after the South Carolina game. He said, listen, everybody's allowed a bad day, but it was the body language we got from our senior leader in the loss at Columbia that really bothered Butch. Showing his frustration with teammates at times, too, and you have to wonder if well, that was a poor route. How to driven Butch Jones crazy. Yes, you Because I showed my emotion. I'd have driven him just flat out crazy. 37 yard attempt. And Medley off the ball. First miss inside 40 yards for Aaron Medley this season. The Cobra is out. Would have good. made it a one-point game. Good snap, good hold. Just didn't turn in for him. Wanted a little bit of draw on that wedge. Past yep. years. It's not your grandpa's Vanderbilt. It's not your dad's. Nope. It may not even be your older brother's. It's a new Vandy. You pointed it out. It's a team that fights for their head coach and for Derek Mason. There were times we've seen this season and even tonight where maybe. With all due respect, the Vandy of old just kind of goes away quietly into the night. When it was 21-7, it would have been pretty much Katie bar the door. And you know, you, you would expect that at that time. Don't expect it now. You're going to get a fight for 60 minutes. That's what he's been trying to build here. That's the message that his players have received. And he sends a message back to the players. He trusts them. That, that fourth and goal, they want to go for it. He trusted his players to get it done. Came up short. But it sent a message that he believes in him. Barnett maybe lined up off sides already. No flag there, and it's Darius Sims straight ahead. 
Sims able to pick up seven. Corey Vereen with the stop. It'll be third and one for Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt's offense has been almost unstoppable tonight. 518 yards of total offense. Kyle Shermer has thrown for 416. Kyle Shermer this season, one of the least efficient quarterbacks in the SEC. And he looks like Jay Cutler out there tonight. Bring the big back in Dallas Rivers. Faced with this situation a couple of times in the game. Dallas Rivers behind Shermer. He's got the two and more. Dallas Rivers breaks into the Tennessee secondary. Tracked down from behind. And Vandy with a four-point lead gets a 39-yard run and an opportunity to work some clock. Chase Justin School throws the block to free up Dallas Rivers. Watch number 58 seal it off. And then it's a foot race. Certainly not going to outrun Cam Sutton. But the big back gets it done for Vandy in the short yardage situation. They could put a lot of pressure on Tennessee with a score here. Ralph Webb. Able to pick up four. And then you're Vanderbilt. Obviously, you want to score, get a two score lead, but you can also slow play this thing and work this clock in the fourth quarter with a four point lead. You can't lose on a field goal. So, worst case scenario, you get this thing down under two minutes, and Tennessee would have a long field yeah. to try and find a touchdown. That's what I mean. Great shape. By a lot of pressure. If you're able to knock one through with Openshaw, your kicker, who's pretty good in his own right, and now you've got to go down and, and score a touchdown. Just to get this baby to overtime with very, very little time left. Ralph Webb, huge hole. Ralph Webb, touchdown, Vanderbilt. He went right into Todd Kelly. That's the attitude that exemplifies what Derek Mason wants out of this football team and this program. We're not going to shy away from anybody. Watch the end of this run. It's a statement run by Ralph Webb. Finish it right there. End zone. Touchdown. An 80-yard drive for Vanderbilt following the missed field goal by Medley. Second touchdown of the night for Webb. Vanderbilt leads Tennessee by 11 with 4.06 to go in the fourth quarter. Tennessee has dreams of a Sugar Bowl. Vanderbilt pouring water on those dreams. The Doors trying to get to bowl eligibility themselves. What did Derek Mason tell us last week? He said, you know, I'd like, this was after watching Louisville and Houston last Thursday night, he said, I'd like to find a way to open up our offense a little bit. Well, he opened it up. Cameron Sutton is a breakaway returner. Cuts back at the 20 and crawls his way out to the 28-yard line. Tennessee's got a hurry, down 11 with three timeouts to go. Josh Dobbs in the air finds his tight end, and Kroom gets... Upended after picking up 14 yards in a first down. And you see the tempo increase. Right to the line of scrimmage. Josh Dobbs giving the play and we're gonna get one snapped here quickly. Dobbs threw for 398 against Texas AM earlier this season and that heartbreaking loss to Kyle Field. Camara snuffed out for a gain of two. Ladarius Wiley drops him. They got a bunch of guys deep. They're gonna give one up over the top. See him disperse. This, we call this four across, where you just got corners deep, safeties deep, play everything underneath you. Complete but short of the chain. A gain of six at time to Chrome. And there's Williams again with another big stop. More playing time for Jawan Williams tonight. And the freshman's coming up big. Third down and short. The clock, the enemy of the volunteers right now, even with three timeouts. 
Three minutes to go. Dobbs wants a throw on third and short. Kamara's got it. First down. Plenty more for the speedster. And shoves out of bounds by Cunningham. A pickup of 12. But Kamara's one of those guys that you line him up in shorts and a t-shirt and run him in a 40. He's going to time out just about the same when you put pads and a helmet on him. It's the speed. He just looks so much faster than everybody else on the field. Blinding speed. Dobbs on a crossing route, able to find Malone. He turns it upfield. These volunteers aren't done yet. Yeah. 2.36 to go, and the clock will stop on a 17-yard game. I thought it was just too much time to, to go to just pure soft coverage to allow for catches and runs and pick up first downs, continuously stopping the clock or get, allowing them to get out of bounds. Dobbs perfect on this drive. Chase down from behind, gets it away to Kamara. And Kamara cut down in bounds with 2.22 and rolling to go. Another thing to consider here, Andre, if they're able to punch it in on this drive, it'd be with, I don't know, 90 seconds left, maybe they're going to have to go for two. Yeah, I think so. Dobbs will flare it out to the right side. Kelly gets out of bounds, but only picks up a yard. 2.03 to go. You think about it, you go for two, you don't make it, you still have the onside kick to go score seven. Yep. That'll find the end zone first, though. This is third yeah. and eight. And then if, you do, if you're able to pick up the two points, now you just need a field goal. Dobbs flushed. Trying to direct traffic pressure from behind. He fights his way through and gets inside the 15 and fourth down forthcoming for Tennessee. I don't know why they're rushing. Call the timeout. Take your time. Get the play call that you want. And that's exactly First time out of the half. what Butch Jones is going to do this here. Be a 30 second timeout. 45 34. You're down 11. Would you consider taking the three here and making it an eight point game? Well, then you go for the onside kick. Yeah. Curious decision. Sugar Bowl on the line for Tennessee. I'd have to answer some questions if they don't picked up pick up this fourth down here. Camara got to make some people miss. He can't, and Tennessee turns it over on downs. Oren Burks and Trey Harden get the ball back for Vandy. Don't understand the call. Just take the field goal and then worry about it on the other end. Dobbs was eight for eight on that drive. Derek Mason letting his emotions come out a little bit, but keeping everything in front of him, making a play. And Orrin Burks has been solid, one of the more consistent players on this team. And there's Mason. He knows. He's feeling it. No victory formation. They're trying to pick up the first down with Webb. That'll do it. Tennessee's defense besieged by injuries. Falls apart in the second half of the season. Vanderbilt turns it up in the second half. Their offense comes out of nowhere. Back to back. Big wins against Ole Miss, and now they're rivals from the East Tennessee. Forty-five, thirty-four, your final. Vanderbilt's going bowling for the first time since 2013. Derek Mason and his coaching staff have earned this victory. And a classy moment with Josh Dobbs. 608 yards of offense for Vandy tonight. 416 through the air for Shermer. 
Let's go down the field. Cole standing by with the winning head coach. Coach Mason, this is as animated as I've ever seen you on the sideline. Describe how you feel right now. Man, I'm so excited for these seniors. You know what? They did this. We did this. People said we couldn't get it done here at Vanderbilt. Well, I'll tell you something. You better fear to be, because we're back in this place. We are back in the house. Yeah! You mentioned your seniors. They came up big for you tonight, but to be able to get them to a bowl game, we don't have to talk about APR. You qualified on your own in the W column. Yeah. What does it mean to that group? That's the way we wanted it. We wanted a victory. You know, at the end of the day, man, we, we didn't want to sneak in the back door. We wanted to kick, get, kick in the door, walk through the front door. Okay, man, let's have some fun. And these kids have earned it. They've done everything that I've asked them to. They came out here in the second half. We defended on defense. Man, man we played great offense, and we did enough on special teams. And that's good enough to win. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. They didn't just kick in a door. They kicked in a big orange door tonight. And that's going to have it reverberate through this entire state. 45-34, our final. Coming up next, SEC Now. Dari, Doring, and Booger. Fellas, what a great day and a fun day in college football. <laughs>